And good morning. Welcome to GSBA Rapid Response, giving you the opportunity to ask questions with live answers. Navigating unemployment is tricky. Today, we will address your rights as a worker and as an employer around unemployment with immediate feedback from dedicated GSBA member, Dobson Hicks. My name is Joey Chapman. I use he, him, his pronouns. I am the membership development manager for GSBA. Uh, and I will be today's rapid response moderator. Along with fellow GSBA staff uh, tuning in, joining me today is Terea Miller. Terea uh, uses she, her, hers pronouns and is the GSBA uh, membership programs manager. GSBA continues to follow Governor Inslee's stay home, stay, stay healthy order, uh, currently extended to May 4th. Our staff members are participating physical distancing, uh, working remotely, while staying socially connected, uh, meeting your needs uh, with our up-to-date GSBA COVID-19 emergency resource page, and of course, rapid response. So how will rapid response work for you? Uh, our format uh, will be, uh, for these virtual meetings, will be sort of strategically um, and structurally organic, um, allowing you to engage with a professional, um, asking questions uh, in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, we are, of course, on the Zoom platform, so definitely feel free to look at the bottom of your screen. Utilize that chat button um, throughout the hour. Uh, feel free to use that. Uh, both Terea and I will be following along, uh, doing our best to ensure that all questions do receive answers. Uh, so today, we would like to go ahead and welcome our very special guest, uh, Aubrey Hicks from Dobson Hicks, um, offering employment law advice, counseling, and litigations uh, for employers and employees. Thanks so much uh, for joining us today, Aubrey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. We want to go ahead and give you just a moment to, you know, give a little bit of background about yourself, introduce yourself to, to everybody uh, joining us today. Okay, thank you. So uh, as Joey said, I'm Aubrey Hicks. I am an employment lawyer uh, here in Seattle. Um, I mostly work with employees, but I also do a lot of work with small businesses and nonprofits, um, helping them with their employment issues and hopefully um, trying to keep them out of trouble. Uh, so, um, and I guess, I, I just want to say a couple things before we get going. Um, a lot is changing literally every day. So uh, I'm going to try to answer your questions as best I can, but um, we will probably want to do another one of these um, as things, like I said, are literally changing by the day. Um, and the government is still working on making all kinds of rules and things. So we will do the best we can, but I uh, just want to throw that caveat out there that what I tell you today could be wrong next week. Which unfortunately seems like a lot of things that have been happening uh, of recent. So we definitely appreciate you taking the time to connect with uh, with the GSBA members today. And um, let's just go ahead and dive right in uh, to some initial questions that we have on hand. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, anyone who's tuning in, please uh, go ahead and use that Q and A box. Um, we're happy to make sure that your questions uh, get asked. Um, all right. So here's a uh, first initial question. Um, I own a business and don't know uh, whether to lay off my employees or put them on standby. Which is the best uh, option? Uh, so it, it depends. <laughs> um, I guess generally I would say uh, standby is an option that allows you to um, not have to lay off your workers if you think that you're going to uh, be able to you know, get back up and running and you're going to need their help. Um, but they can still get unemployment benefits. So um, if you designate them on standby, they're not unemployed. Uh, they don't have to be out searching for a job, which is um, usually a requirement for people on unemployment. Um, but uh, because, you know, they're still working for you, so they will still be your employees, but they can still get benefits. Um, so I would say sort of generally, if you, uh, you know, maybe you don't need them right now, but you expect you're going to in a month or two, um, and you're not wanting to have to go back and hire uh, all new staff, that is a really good option. Um, Another option uh, is to look into uh, employment security has a, a program called sh uh, work share where you can um, sort of reduce hours. So if you have, you know, an, a few hours, but not enough to have all of your staff have full time hours, um, you can work with them to sort of split hours, give minimal hours to everyone, but they can still also collect benefits to help supplement what they would be making if they had been working full time. Could you go a little bit more into uh, Washington State's paid leave law, um, specifically uh, with for small businesses? So that is um, 
a new law that just went into effect in January. Um, it basically every employee in the state of Washington, uh, more or less, is going to be covered by that. Um, they are able to earn paid leave um, a certain number, a certain amount per pay period, which I honestly don't remember off the top of my head. Um, they started earning uh, back at last year, 2019, and 2020, January 2020 is when people were able to start utilizing that. Um, that can be utilized right now for people uh, that are either uh, have become sick with COVID, um, have, have been quarantined by their care, their uh, medical provider, uh, or people who have to care for a family member uh, who's sick with COVID, um, and also people who have to care for their children um, during this time. Um, I do know that it's the, because the system is sort of brand new and just went into effect, they're really, really backed up right now. Um, last I heard, it's about 10 weeks behind. So um, the advice that sort of all of us employment lawyers um, are giving right now is go try the unemployment benefits route first, uh, but certainly there are those other paid leave benefits that could be utilized. Um, it's just, it, it's probably gonna take more time to be able to get those benefits. Sounds like we all need patience when we don't have much patience at the moment. Yes. Um, another question, um, unemployment claims, uh, if they're denied, what, what can somebody do about that? So a couple of things, um, you can always appeal. Uh, is kind of the first thing. You'll get a notice and it will say on the letter, you've been denied, here's the reason we're denying you. Uh, you have, typically it's you know 30 days to appeal that. Um, I will say right now, just because everything is really sort of a mess and changing so quickly, uh, there are a number of people who have received denials um, for things that previously wouldn't have qualified for unemployment, but they do now. Uh, they just didn't have the system set up yet. So, for example, previously, um, someone who was on standby would not be able to collect unemployment. And so people who have applied for that are getting an automatic denial. However, they are aware that that's an issue. They're now going back and fixing that. Um, so I guess the first thing would be try to contact Employment Security and find out if it's something that's going to be fixed. Um, there are extremely long wait times. What I've been telling everyone is to, um, they have a, a wait list where you can get, sign up to get a call back from somebody. So the first thing would be to get on that list so you know you have a call coming. Um, in the meantime, they may correct it depending on the reason why it was denied. Um, and they might, uh, and you can also still do the appeal if they're denying it for some reason. Um, I will also say just sort of while we're on this topic, um, as I said in the beginning, things are changing really quickly. Uh, they are right now targeting April 18th to implement a lot of these new changes um, that have come in mostly related to the federal stimulus package. And so uh, they're asking people who you know, wouldn't have traditionally qualified but are now going to qualify under the new rules to wait and apply after the 18th because we know right now the system is going to automatically uh, kick out a, a denial. Uh, and if you wait, hopefully they'll have everything set up. Um, that could change that last, I checked yesterday was the last update I got and they're still targeting the 18th. I don't know if that's gonna go, but um, that's just something to be aware of. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and look at the uh, chat box and see what the first question was from uh, our people that are, are tuning in today. Oh, Taria, is your mic on? Okay, I'm off. Sorry. Go. Thanks. Peggy asked, it is uh, her understanding that the WARN notices have been suspended in most states. Is Washington one of those states? And are there specific notices that must be filed by the employers before they lay off their workforce? So it's going to depend on the size of the employer. Um, that applies uh, to employers. And truthfully, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say 500 employees or more. Um, I have not heard anything about it being suspended, but it's possible that it has been. Uh, usually employers, most employers, and I would probably guess a lot of employers uh, who would be part of GSBA are going to be small enough that that wouldn't apply to them. Um, so 
typically they don't have to give um, any specific notice. Uh, I guess just as far as best practice, I always recommend that you give as much notice as you can. This just makes it easier for everyone. Um, you know, take into consideration how you're, you know, if, if you're gonna try and do standby or something like that, rather than just laying everyone off, that's something that the employer actually has to do. They have to designate it as standby. So that's, you know, something to consider as well. Um, so yeah, it's probably just gonna be really dependent on the size of the employer and the nature of what they're trying to do. All right, that's great. We've got a bunch of questions coming in. So we're trying to keep up uh, with the flow here. Um, looks like one regarding uh, $600 uh, unemployment stimulus checks. Um, when should uh, folks be expecting that to come in? So I don't know for sure. We haven't, we don't have a date yet. Um, my understanding is that we're expecting it in the next couple of weeks. Um, hopefully that's going to be part of what's uh, the system and changes that are going to be implemented by the 18th. Um, I can say that uh, it's going to just happen automatically. So if you've already qualified for unemployment, you'll just, it'll start, it'll show up. Um, I don't know yet whether it's going to be a separate check or just add it on to your usual deposit every week, uh, but it will be retroactive. So, you know, let's say they don't get around um, to getting the system fixed and you don't start getting the payments until mid-May, they'll go back and pay you. If you've been on unemployment since April 1st, um, it'll go back retroactive to the date of the, uh, them implementing that act. So it's coming hopefully soon. That's one of the things we don't really have an, an exact answer on yet. So if an employee is, is not eligible to receive state unemployment benefits, though, will they be able to receive the $600 uh, federal check? No. So the, the federal check is for essentially anyone who qualifies for benefits in their state is going to get that amount. Um, it doesn't matter what the amount of benefits you qualified for. It doesn't matter, you know, what, what you're designated, for example, whether you're on standby or laid off or furloughed, as long as you've qualified for some kind of benefits. Um, if you can't qualify for benefits at all, you're not going to get that extra 600. Okay. Uh, Trey, it looks like, um, both of our Q&A boxes and chat boxes are going crazy. Can we go ahead and jump over to the Q&A? And it uh, looks like Kim may have asked a question. Yes, are part-time employees also able to get standby? And what if they are in school and worked part-time? Can they get benefits? So uh, part-time employee, I'm assuming that means they were working part-time and then got laid off. Um, if that's the case, yes. Um, they can get benefits. If the question is about whether someone who is currently working part-time can still get benefits, if they were, for example, laid off from their other job, yes. Um, what will happen is uh, they'll make a determination of how uh, the amount of benefits you get, and then it just, whatever money you earn from your part-time job will be reduced from that. So for example, let's say your benefit is $600 a week, and you make $300 a week at your part-time job, they will you'll get a benefit of 300 a week from unemployment. Got a bit of a scenario uh, question here um, from an owner of a catering company. Uh, they recently laid off 22 employees. I'm curious about the $600 additional payment that should be coming soon for these employees. Uh, will they probably, uh, we will probably not have much work for a while um, and they will have to start slowly. Um, if the people come back part-time, Will they still be eligible for the 600 um, as long as they're not fully employed? Yes, they should be. So as long as they're still eligible for unemployment generally, which they should be if they're not back to full-time work, um, they will be getting that 600. It's, um, the 600 is just a flat payment. It's not adjusted for part-time work or um, what you were earning previously. Just as long as you qualify, it's the straight 600. Trey, is there another question to follow up? Yes, Heather asks, can corporate, yes, Heather asks, can corporate officers apply for unemployment if not for the state, then for the federal $600? Uh, so I'm not quite sure what uh, you mean by corporate officer. I'm assuming that just means, you know, like maybe a C-suite um, executive. If that's the case, then it, if you've lost your job, yes, um, you can apply for benefits. Um, 
there's not a separate mechanism to, for example, just apply to the federal government for benefits. Uh, it's gonna, it has to go through the state and you have to qualify in your state. So if you don't qualify for benefits in Washington, you're not gonna get the extra 600. As a sole proprietor, uh, what info do you need on hand for the unemployment applications? And, and how much can uh, we count on percentage of what we've made for the past uh, to receive the 600 weekly? So as far as what you, the amount, um, there's a rather complicated formula. Um, if you take a look at the Employment Security Department website, they've got a calculator on there. Um, it's basically a percentage of what you made in your base year. Um, so that's, I would recommend looking at that. As far as um, so self-employed sole proprietors, that is something that is still being worked out because that's brand new for uh, people to be able to obtain those benefits. Um, I would, most likely you're gonna wanna have, um, you know, the information from your income, your revenue for the past couple of years. Um, I would say probably have at least 18 months on hand. Uh, typically the base year is about the last five quarters. Uh, so at least have that information of the you know revenue you brought in and um, that's something that we'll hopefully be able to provide more information on in the future once they finish the rulemaking on that particular piece. Do folks have to search for work uh, to continue to receive unemployment benefits? Right now, no. Um, it, for, for example, if someone's on standby, you don't have to continue searching. Um, if you're in, especially an industry that's, you know, for example, the restaurant industry, you obviously can't be out searching for a new job, um, bartending when nobody's open. Um, so that is being waived right now. They are still encouraging people, obviously, to try to be searching. Uh, but if, you know, if you can't, um, if it's not feasible for you, that, that's waived right now. All right, keep moving on. Uh, please keep those questions coming in. Uh, They're great and we wanna make sure that we can answer anyone who's, who's participating and any questions you may have. Um, here's one, I'm, I'm self-employed. Uh, can I get unemployment benefits? Yes, uh, should be able to most likely. Um, that's one of the new changes is that uh, people who are self-employed now can. Um, I've been hearing that that's process has been going pretty smoothly for self-employed people um, who are applying because, you know, your income is been reduced or actually maybe even eliminated in a lot of circumstances. So yes, absolutely apply. Can an essential employer uh, terminate uh, an employee who chooses not to work but hasn't been quarantined by their doctor? Yes, they can. Um, there's currently no requirement that they keep someone employed um, if that's their own personal choice not to uh, go to work. Um, there are, you know, I always recommend caution and uh, making sure that this is something that's really truly not been advised by a medical professional um, because if they if a, you know, their physician has said you are at risk, you can't go to work or you need to quarantine, um, that is a situation where then uh, potentially paid leave or FMLA might come into play. Uh, so I, again, I urge caution, but currently we don't have anything that prevents an employer from uh, terminating someone who's just choosing uh, not to come to work. Trey, I see we have uh, something in the Q&A from Martha Davis. Yes. Uh, this all hit when Martha was out of the country. When Martha came back to Seattle, was closed down for three days and immediately laid off one person due to not enough work and had him apply for unemployment as standby. After the fact, Martha found out that he did some things that are fireable offenses. Found out that he is uh, having um, eye He's colorblind, which is a safety issue for doing electrical work, and looked at um, their situation and realized uh, Martha will probably need to lay him off due to lack of some of um, their work. Uh, he is the last person that Martha hired, so um, Martha just needs some clarification on how she should handle the situation. 
Um, that one I would probably, Martha, I know Martha, so uh, I will connect with you separately because I have a lot of follow-up questions that are probably um, really hyper-specific to your situation. So if you don't mind, I'll just, after we get off this, I'll send you an email. Here's a quick one. Uh, we are a small business with lots of folks working uh, uh, part-time. Uh, we have several employees who uh, have asked to be permanently laid off as they were under the impression that this was more advantageous. Um, how does that affect any grant money like uh, the EIDL or PPP? Um, is there any benefit to permanently laying or standing, uh, uh, st uh, putting uh, employees on standby? So it used to, before they changed the rules, before the emergency rules went into place, uh, it used to be that a worker on standby could not collect unemployment benefits. So it, that was true that it would be more advantageous for them to be laid off fully because then they could collect benefits. Um, because that has now changed, um, I don't think it really matters just as a practical matter. Uh, they'll be able to collect benefits either way. Um, you know, it's more of, you know, if realistically you think that you're going to be able to bring people back um, in the somewhat near future, uh, it's probably better for everyone to just have you standby. Um, if you don't think realistically you're going to need all of these people or, um, you know, really any help for quite a while, then, you know, probably go ahead and go for the layoff. Um, but yeah, at least right now under the emergency rules, it doesn't really matter uh, so much. So and as far as the grant money, um, I assume that they're asking about the uh, like the small business grants to pay payroll. Right. Uh, I am not I'm not totally sure how that interacts with unemployment. Um, I know that part of that is um, if you're getting the grant meant to pay payroll, um, you're you know not supposed to be laying people off because the idea is that you're supposed to be paying them. So uh, I'm not sure how that specifically in, impacts unemployment. Um, but yeah, as far as the layoff versus standby, either one should be fine right now. So can, uh, for people who are currently on standby or temporary laid off, do employers have to hire them back? So standby means you haven't been let go, that you're still employed, technically still employed by the employer. Uh, so if it comes that, uh, you know, you realize you think you're going to need them and then we get a couple months down the road and you realize you don't have the work, you can at that point then call them officially laid off. Um, so I, I mean, I guess there's no requirement that you um, hire them back, but just be aware that if they're on standby, they're technically still employed by you. Uh, Terea, is there perhaps a question I've missed? Yes, Nicole asks, what if you are self-employed and started a new business in 2020, so you don't have information on your income in that new business for the past 18 months? Uh, I honestly am not sure how they would handle that specific scenario. Um, I haven't seen how the benefits are being calculated for folks who are self-employed yet. Um, it's, yeah, I, I honestly, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, that's probably, you know, if you don't have historical data, they, they may look at your past income and go from there. Uh, but yeah, I'm not actually sure about how they're going to do that. There was a little bit of a clarification uh, question. If, if employees are on standby now, um, can't they get benefits longer if they are fully laid, uh, laid off at a later date? So there, the period of benefits is sort of fixed. Uh, I don't think it matters whether it's called a layoff or standby. Um, you are typically qualify for a certain number of weeks. Um, that's being the expanded right now, how many weeks you can get, um, but it doesn't, uh, I guess, sort of reset. Um, if you lay them off later, it doesn't sort of start over as a new period of time um, because, you know, you sort of have this fixed set of weeks and then um, once you run out of those, you have to work a certain amount again before you can qualify again. So that, that's not really going to change as far as I know. Trey, it looks like Paul uh, had a question. Yes, I have two jobs on standby, one part-time. Is it okay to file a claim to make up the standby? Part-time is a um, school for 20 hours a week and um, 
the standby is a business 30 hours a week. And I'm sorry, the question was whether they can file for unemployment benefits? Yes. Yes. Uh, you should be able to, um, if you're still working at all on either of those jobs, even if it's part time, um, as I said before, they'll just reduce what you're making from your benefits. But yeah, currently people who are working um, in part time jobs can qualify. Are you able to discuss uh, on the Families First Coronavirus uh, Response Act and which businesses are required to uh, meet law? Um, is there an exception for, for small businesses? I'm sorry, businesses to meet. So, all they said they said was to meet law. Mm. Okay, uh, so I'm going to just assume that we're kind of talking about the maybe um, medical, the paid medical leave that came out of that act, because that's sure. what I get the most often. Um, the answer is we don't know for sure yet. Uh, they're still working on the rulemaking. Um, I haven't seen the guidance yet from the Department of Labor. Uh, basically what they've said at this point is companies with less than 500, 500 employees or less are going to have to uh, pay that paid medical leave and then get um, either a credit or reimbursed by the, the federal government. Uh, there will be some exceptions for companies that have 50 employees or less, but they haven't yet come out with the, what the, um, how that's going to be determined who is accepted from that. Um, so that's one of those things we're just kind of keeping an eye on and waiting for the rulemaking. Trey, it looks like we have some more uh, information from Martha. You want to go ahead and, and touch base on that one? Yes. Uh, also, Martha, um, she hears with the PPP grant loan that if your payroll drops more than 25%, the PPP becomes a loan or part of it becomes a loan. Uh, I also heard that this is not figured out yet. So what are they going to look at? The last three months, last year during the same time period? I asked this for two reasons. Last year I had a tech um, who you know about who uh, wasted a, a lot of time. So last year's payroll is higher than um, this year's because of that. Also, if I permanently lay off the employee, I was talking about in previous question, our payroll will drop. So before I apply for PPP, I want to know if it's going to be a loan or forgiven. That I don't know. Um, there's <laughs> still a lot of confusion around how that's gonna work. Um, even the banks that are taking those applications don't even know how it's gonna work. So uh, it's kind of all up in the air right now, to be honest, I'm, I'm not sure. I would say, you know, at least apply at, at this time, just because I know that there's already a backlog um, and you can at least get in line. And then I guess you could, you don't have to take it if, it, if you decide it's not gonna work for you. But I, I, I unfortunately don't know yet on the, those grants. Where can folks go to get aff affordable help to make sure that um, they're positioning themselves most successfully when applying for, for unemployment. There's some concerns of falling between the cracks and not qualifying, um, especially without any guidance. Yeah, absolutely. So I typically refer people to the Unemployment Law Project. Um, it's a really great um, nonprofit organization here in Washington that um, helps people with unemployment pro bono help. Um, a lot of, I volunteer with them, and a lot of other employment attorneys do. Um, they're really great resource just for basic information. And then if you're denied benefits, they can help you uh, with appeals if you need to and that sort of thing. So um, that would be my first recommendation. My second recommendation would be the Fair Work Center. That's another uh, free resource I refer people to um, really frequently. They also have a lot of good information and resources. Um, it, as with everything else right now, I know that the Unemployment Law Project is, is backed up, so be patient, but they're really trying um, with asking for lots of new attorneys to volunteer. So, I mean, I think you can get the help, uh, but if it takes you a while to get through, just, you know, like I said, be patient. Um, and uh, I would, you know, in the meantime, check out their website. They've got a lot of information and they are also hosting every Monday a webinar um, I believe it's on their website, but similar to this, but they're just answering unemployment questions. So that's another another good thing to check out. 
Could you let us know a little bit more clarification, the difference between furlough and standby? Uh, <laughs> It's kind of one of those funny things that I don't know that there really is a practical difference um, right now, at least. So typically furlough is uh, for a period of time. So for example, um, it, you know, seasonal workers, they only work, you know, let's say September to May, and then they're furloughed for May, June, and July. And then they know that work starts again in September. Um, standby is more of a, hey, we don't have the work for you right now, but we think we're going to, we just don't know when. And so you're sort of on standby and unless and until we say, yes, now we have the work, come back to work. Great. Uh, Terea, it uh, looks like we had uh, a question uh, with, from Lisa there. Yes, can you discuss the Families First Corona Response Act and which businesses are required to meet law? Is there an exemption exemption for very small businesses? So yes, the, um, there's still rulemaking on that. So I don't know yet how that's exactly gonna work, but the law itself says that um, businesses with 50 employees or less, some of them will be exempt. Uh, we just don't know what the guidelines are yet for how they're going to determine who's exempt and who's not. Um, but generally, if very, very small, so less than 50 will probably be exempt. Um, anything between 50 and 500, probably not. Can a self-employed person get both UI and the PPP? Uh, I guess it depends if you employ other people. Um, so my understanding with the PPP is it's more... Um, geared towards helping you make payroll so you don't have to lay people off. Uh, so if it's, you know, self-employed means just you by yourself. Um, there are, I think, some things you can probably get, uh, but if you're not trying to make payroll, it, it may not be as applicable to you. Uh, but yeah, I think in theory, if, you know, you're self-employed and you employ several others, uh, you can get the grant to try to help make payroll and those other ex expenses that qualify under the grant and then also get unemployment for your own uh, income. Uh, Tere, it looks like we have Paul uh, Conrad has a, a question comment. Yeah, should I file my first weekly claim on March 22nd or jump to the April 14th claim? I have yet to file a claim. Also does pushing claim button file the, the claim? So I'm not sure what those dates are sp specific to. Um, generally, I just advise people, to, as soon as you know you're not gonna have work to go ahead and file, just because there is that backlog. Um, you can file and get your claim going and get approved, even if you are not making your weekly claim for benefits. So I have seen people that, for example, um, you know, their employer has said, we have enough work for two more weeks, uh, but we're going to lay you off in two weeks. I, you know, recommend that they file just to get the claim going, but then you don't make the weekly claim, which actually is how you get paid for two weeks until you're actually out of work, if that makes sense. So, um, I'm, and then I guess the other thing, I'm not sure if that question was maybe geared towards the changes that are supposed to be taking place. Um, so, Yes, maybe wait till after April 18th uh, if you are doing like standby or something like that. Um, they are, Employment Security has been asking people that, that know that they're only getting benefits because the rules have changed uh, to wait a little bit just because otherwise they're gonna get that automatic denial and then they're gonna have to go through the system. Uh, whereas if you wait till the changes are implemented, you'll probably you know go, get through faster and get approved faster. Will um, an employee who receives any community grants have that amount count against their unemployment claim? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, they might. Um, I don't know if they're going to qualify it as actual income or not. So yeah, I, I actually don't know for sure. Sorry, I needed to unmute myself there. Just, I wanted to jump over to like gig economy workers, um, like Uber drivers. Um, can they receive benefits? Yes, uh, that is actually a new, another change under the emergency rules. Previously, um, independent contractors, gig economy workers could not, uh, but you can now. 
Uh, so that I think is another thing that is, um, I'm not certain whether they're still getting the auto denials, but I would say probably wait until after April 18th and then uh, file because you should be able to get benefits for that. Uh, another question came in. Uh, how do the new sick and safe time laws uh, affect me as an employer? Uh, they just went into effect uh, at the beginning of the year. So I, I guess generally um, you're well, you should have been since for uh, since the beginning of 2019, uh, you know, taking paying into the funds and taking the deductions from your employees paychecks. Um, that, that would be sort of the first thing. And then uh, as now where employees can start using it, um, probably mostly just, you know, making sure that if someone is asking for leave, that they're, you know, they're aware that they uh, can take that paid leave most likely. Um, and I, I think I mentioned before, just being careful when people are maybe self quarantining um, or choosing not to work, just making sure that it's really not something that, you know, has been advised by a medical professional, which would then qualify them to take uh, paid sick leave. Here's an important question. Is there a chance that the unemployment money could run out? <laughs> I don't think so. I hope not. Um, that is a question way above my pay grade. <laughs> um, I don't, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I think the state maintains a pretty big fund and a lot of this extra money is coming from that uh, federal stimulus package. Uh, so I think if that money runs out, we probably have lots bigger problems. All right. Uh Here's one. Uh, I work for an essential employer. Uh, can I receive benefits if I choose to stay home from work, but haven't been quarantined or instructed by my doctor to quarantine myself? Right now, no. Um, you, if you're choosing to do that, you can't. There's no benefits for that. Um, if you have, you know, symptoms, you've been told to quarantine. If you're caring for someone who has to, who is sick, uh, you can. But if, it, if it's just your choice right now, no. Tria, are there uh, any further uh, Q&As that have come through? Yes, um, Martha is an owner of an S corporation and was told in previous Zoom meetings that uh, they could go ahead and apply for unemployment um, when she did because um, she has, has not paid into unemployment. Uh, she was told um, she could not get unemployment. So can owners of S-Corps get unemployment? I don't know. I, I've not heard anything specific to the type of business entity that's been formed. Um, I will say that the, the ability of a self-employed person to get unemployment benefits is pretty new. Um, that's one of the new emergency rules. It is possible that the denial was automatic because they haven't implemented that yet. Um, but I'm not sure as to the, like I said, the specific business entity, whether that matters. Okay. Uh, oh. um, uh, another follow-up question is, uh, they are an essential business, financial services, insurance, and also an S course and, and only shareholder receiving W-2 and one other W-2 employee. They have closed, um, their office and working remotely, so um, are still employed. Revenue is down due to no storefront. Um, are they eligible to apply for unemployment and get and also get the stimulus? And they hope to file for the PPP um, under SBA, but haven't yet. Okay, so I um, I'm not clear on whether uh, they're asking if the W two employees can get uh, benefits, but if that's the case, yes. Um, if their uh, pay has been reduced and or their hours, so a lot of employees have had, they're still employed, but their uh, their employer has either, you know, cut them from 40 hours to 25 or some salaried people have had their salaries reduced. Um, if that's the case, you can get partial benefits. Uh, so I, I guess I would say yes. Um, and then with respect to the grants, um, again, that's sort of directed at um, 
making payroll. So I, I think that's uh, sort of a separate thing from unemployment um, and probably should be able to do both. Question about order of priorities. Um, is the, the federal FFCRC benefit to be used before the new state paid uh, FMLA? Uh, I am actually not sure about that. Um, I would probably say as a practical matter, uh, you might have a better chance with the state paid leave just because that's been um, already implemented and it's, although they're backed up, uh, it's you know already in, in the works, whereas the federal money is brand new and um, we don't know yet exactly how people are gonna apply for it or get it. Um, so probably at this point, I'd say try the state leave first. Um, I know that the federal leave is sort of supplemental for people that don't qualify for the state leave. Uh, so that'd probably be a good place to start and hopefully we'll get more information um, as they you know, finish up the rulemaking and the guidance comes out on that. Speaking of timely questions, uh, school's out now. Um, for teachers, uh, can they get unemployment while, while school is out? Uh, so, if they are not working, um, I know a lot of teachers are actually still working and working from home or doing online classes um, and still being paid. Uh, so I guess it depends uh, if they're not actually working anymore, then they should be able to get benefits. Um, if they're still working, they would, you know, they're still, as long as they're still receiving their pay, they're not gonna qualify for benefits. So we have a little bit more time uh, left for uh, some more questions. So definitely keep those coming in. Um, Tria, is there another one that came through in the Q&A? Yeah, so owners of S, a, a clarification question. If our owners of S-Corps considered self-employed and if self-employed um, sole proprietorship, how much um, are they eligible for in the benefits? Up to $600 weekly or a flat 600 weekly fee? or amount. So I'm not sure again about the how the business entity is designated. Um, but I guess I would say generally if you you know, it's your business and you're employed and you pay yourself, um, they're probably going to consider that self employed. Um, as far as the benefit amount, it's typically based on um, the average of what your income was during your base year, which is generally the last uh, five quarters. Uh, so the amount is going to be sort of based on that. Um, the 600 is extra. So there's going to be, first of all, the amount that you're getting from the state, which is going to be calculated using the very complicated formula, um, which is what's going to average sort of your, you know, your last five quarters. And then in addition, you're going to get the flat 600 from the federal government. So the federal government 600 isn't going to change, but whatever you qualify for in the state is going to be based on their formula. Uh, what if somebody didn't wait and applied for the UI uh, as a business owner before the 18th? Um, will they just then qualify automatically or do they do something else after the 18th? So I am not totally sure. Uh, I do know with some of the other issues, like for example, the standby issue, they've been going back automatically and looking for everyone that's got denied and uh, trying to fix it for them. I kind of assume they're gonna do the same thing, but what, I would, what I've been recommending is that people sign up for a time to get a call back because it's gonna be at least a couple of weeks before you get a call back. Um, and then in the meantime, if it gets fixed automatically, great. If not, you've got a call set up and you can talk to them um, and try to get it fixed at that time. Perfect. Um, here's, here's another one. They're coming in quick. Uh, I have a small consulting business, uh, transgender and Latinx owned. Um, I am only currently working on small contract uh, where I won't get paid until June of 2020. Um, the amount I get paid is under $1,000. Uh, can I still apply for unemployment? Most likely, uh, I mean, I'm assuming that that's not generally, uh, like working on that small of a contract is not your standard um, business operation. So if your income has been reduced or eliminated for the most part because of what's, you know, the COVID situation, then you, you most likely will qualify. Um, if that, that kind of sounds like what the scenario is to me. So I, I, I think so. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell, but I think probably. 
Jeff, I see, uh, or excuse me, Terry, I see Jeff uh, had uh, a question. Yeah, if, you pay, if your pay was reduced um, company-wide by a set percent, are you able to qualify for any benefits to make up any of the difference? What are the income requirements for that, if so? So yeah, you should be able to. That's another one of the new um, rules. If you uh, if your pay has been reduced, typically the the threshold is I believe twenty five percent or more. Um, but I, it's, I'm not sure what they're doing exactly now. Um, and the as far as income requirements, I'm not sure if that if they're asking um, like if you have to make a certain amount. But it it would probably be based on whatever their calculation is. So. Um, typically what you had been earning, they'll give you some percentage of that. Does someone need to provide a letter or some type of proof of loss of business um, when they're applying for, for uh, unemployment as a small business owner? Oh, that's a good question. I am not sure what they're asking for right now. Um, again, this is all really new that even um, self-employed people can qualify. So um, I guess I would just say go through the application process and they may or may not be asking for some kind of proof of that. I don't really know what they're doing right now. Looks like we had another follow-up. Uh, what does start date mean? Uh, first check of the year? Uh, so I'm assuming they're asking about uh, filling out the, app, the actual unemployment application Most itself. Um, start date is the date you typically you started work with your employer. Well, that was rapid. We got <laughs> rapid response. Um, looks like we went through ma majority of our, our Q&A that's come through. Um, we did attempt our best to, to stay connected to our, our Facebook Live friends as well um, to get those questions answered. Um, Aubrey, do you have any uh, you know, final words of wisdom to be able to share uh, to folks today? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is just be patient. Um, I know it's really tough right now and everyone's kind of freaking out um, how they're gonna pay their bills, but a lot of people are working really hard on this. I know that and are, are really trying to get this going. So um, that's the biggest thing I can say is, you know, do, be patient, try to do what you can do. Um, reach out to those free resources I mentioned. Um, and, it, you know, if you have questions and need help, um, I think that, you know, more likely than not, most people are going to end up qualifying. So even if it takes a little bit of time, um, you most likely will. So if you, you know, take, kind of take some comfort in that. And then just generally, um, you know, if you've applied and been denied and it, you're still being denied, even after they're, you know, going back and fixing things and implementing new rules, um, there is an appeals process. And I do recommend that you appeal um, you can do that with or without the help of an attorney. It's pretty straightforward. So, you know, even if you feel like um, you were wrongfully denied, go ahead and appeal it. Um, and it, it might take some more time, but there is a decent chance that you would prevail on that appeal. Uh, so just because you got the denial letter, a lot of times I see people get that and they think that's the end of it, but it's not. So just be aware of that. Um, pay attention to whatever the the correspondence from Employment Security says it will give you a deadline to appeal and that's a hard and fast deadline. So um, I do recommend that you do that. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, like I said, uh, just there are there is a um, Employment Security, uh, you can sign up for emails to get updates on how they're handling things. Um, so I, I'm recommending that, um, you know, I'm using that to kind of keep tabs on what's going on, but that's something else that, uh, especially for business owners um, to figure out what's what's sort of happening, what's gonna be happening. Um, and yeah, other than that, I would just say, uh, yeah, be patient. <laughs> We're all in this together and we'll somehow get through, I think, I hope. <laughs> well, on behalf of GSBA, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, additionally, a big thank you to you, Aubrey, uh, for sharing your strategies, you know, during COVID-19. And of course, um, thanks to, to Dobson Hicks as, as well. Um, if any of you have any follow-up questions or, or we may have missed your question today, uh, please do reach out to the GSBA membership team. Uh, we are here to, us, to assist you. Um, also, uh, be sure to visit our online guide and directory to find uh, a full list of, of members ready to to connect with. Um, the directory features hundreds of businesses that support uh, equality for all. Um, uh, so, you know, if you do business with them, make sure that you let them know that you found them through GSBA. Um, 
Also be sure to, to continue to visit the GSBA COVID-19 emergency uh, resource page uh, for up-to-date information. Again, that's located on the GSBA website. Um, it's updated uh, on a daily basis. Uh, for our next GSBA uh, rapid response, uh, it will take place next Tuesday, April the 21st at 10 a.m. Uh, this installment of rapid response, it will feature uh, Mark Costello, uh, SBA uh, Deputy District Director, uh, and Linda Laws, um, Supervisory Lender Relations Specialist at the Seattle SBA uh, District Office. Uh, they will answer member questions about uh, SBA's EIDL and PPP loans, uh, which loans uh, will work best for your business, how to apply, and, and of course, much more. Um, so until then, uh, stay home and, and stay healthy. Thank you, everybody.